after watching this video lecture, students are going to be able to record uh, numbers and uh, calculation answers with the correct number of sig figs. You're going to be able to write numbers in correct scientific notation, and you'll be able to identify the correct sig figs in an answer um, of specific calculation types. So the first thing we need to do is establish the ground rules for significant figures. So significant figures are digits that are significant, um, and we've already used measurement uh, and established what digits are significant when we get the measurements from specific pieces of equipment. Now this setup has to do with when we're just writing down those values. We have to write them down correctly um, or else whoever's reading our notebook um, or you know looking at our data after the fact uh, may be confused at the precision of the instrument we used. So the first thing we need to establish is that significant figures, so numbers that are non-zero numbers, are always going to be significant. So if we look at, let's say, you know, 121. Each one of those numbers is a non-zero number, and each one of them is significant. So there are three sig figs in the, this particular value. Now, if we start to have zeros in the numbers, that's when we have to kind of clarify uh, the set of rules. So we're going to look at that now. Okay, so rule number one is zeros that are between non-zero digits are significant. So basically, any time you have a zero that shows up between two digits um, that are not zeros, the zero that's in between is gonna be counted as significant. Okay, so we have one, two, three numbers here. The zero is in between the two non-zeros, so there's three sig figs here. Okay, these two zeros are sandwiched in between the non-zero digits. So we have one, two, three, four, five significant figures in this number, okay? Now, rule number two, zeros that appear in front of non-zero digits are not significant. Okay, so basically anytime a number starts with zero, those zeros are not going to be significant digits. So um, if we look at these numbers here, these two examples, we have 0 0.095. Neither of these zeros are significant. It's only the 9 and 5 that are significant. So you have two sig figs here. Same thing with this number, the 0 .009. Um, uh, none of these leading zeros are significant. Only this non-zero digit is. So there's only one sig fig in this number. Okay, so leading zeros are never significant. Rule 3 a zeros at the end of the number and to the right of a decimal point are going to be significant. Okay, so um, notice that these zeros here are at the end of the number, right? And they are to the right of this decimal point, so they count as significant. So one, two, three, four. Um, so four sig figs. Same thing here. Zeros are to the right of the decimal um, and at the end of the number. So once again, one, two, three, four sig figs. Okay, and rule number four, zeros at the end of a number, but to the left of the decimal point are significant. Okay, and if you look at this example here, okay guys, what you notice is I have 500 written here um, with a decimal and 500 without a decimal. Okay, so with the presence of this decimal here, the zeros that are at the end of the number are being marked as significant. So the five and the two zeros each are significant uh, digits. So there's three sig figs in this number. If the value is written with no decimal point, so 500 with no decimal point, it's only that first non-zero digit that's going to be significant. So now that we know the ground rules for significant figures, let's go ahead and look at um, significant figures in the context of calculations. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's look at the significant figure rules for addition and subtraction. So whenever you're adding and subtracting numbers, um, your answer is going to have the same number of places to the right of the decimal as the measurement with the least places uh, to the right of the decimal. Okay, so if we go ahead and we look at our two measurements in this first problem, okay, this first one only has one place past the decimal. Okay, this one right here has two places. Okay, and so because this one only has one place past the decimal, my final answer can only have one place past the decimal. So one place past the decimal is that location. Um, we're going to go ahead and do our rounding. So our 23.07 is going to become 23.1 grams. And our final answer has one place to the right of decimal. And if we go ahead and we look at our addition here, um, we have three places to the right of the decimal here. Okay, and then we have four places to the right of the decimal in this measurement. Okay, so our answer has to have the same as the one with the least. So three places is the max. Okay, so one, two, three, the eight is the third place to the right of the decimal. Um, so our final answer is going to be 7.368, because the three doesn't um, cause the eight to round up. And that is our final answer. So notice, 
Uh, for addition and subtraction, the places to the right of the decimal in your final answer will match the measurement with the least places to the right of the decimal. Okay. Now, multiplication and division has a slightly different set of rules. Um, the answer for multiplication and division is always going to have the same number of significant figures as the measurement with the least significant digits. Okay, so this is a little bit different. We're looking at sig figs, not places to the right of the decimal. Okay, so if we look at this number right here, the 600.5, this has four sig figs. Okay, um, that's being divided by 22.0. 22.0 has three sig figs. Okay, so our final answer is going to have three sig figs to match the one with the least significant digits. Okay, so um, the two here is going to be the third significant digit. Um, that 2 is going to get rounded up to 3 because of the 9 next to it. So our final answer here is going to be 27.3 millimeters as our final answer. Okay, Same thing um, applies to our multiplication here. Okay, um, In this particular problem, we have 6 sig figs, or this particular measurement. Um, in this one here, remember leading zeros are not significant, so there's only 4 sig figs in this problem, or in this measurement. Okay, so the least number of sig figs is four, so my final answer has to have one, two, three, four sig figs. Um, and so that's going to be equal to 1.142 liters as our final answer. Okay, and so remember, uh, when we're dealing with uh, significant figures, make sure you take a step back, decide if multiplication and division is occurring or if addition and subtraction is occurring, um, and then apply the appropriate rules. Now, um, we all know that simple addition and subtraction or multiplication division isn't always the type of problem we're dealing with. Sometimes we're going to deal with problems that have uh, multi-step uh, situations, okay? And so if we look back on our percent error calculation, okay, uh, we looked at this earlier on, um, we have our absolute value of our experimental minus theoretical over our theoretical times 100. Okay, and so um, obviously we have subtraction and then division going on here. Okay, so what we're going to need to do is break up our pieces, track um, the digits that are going to be significant, and then um, do our rounding and such at the very end. Okay, so in this particular problem, which we've done before, we're going to go ahead and plug in our experimental and our theoretical. Okay, um, our experimental is what we obtained from lab, so that's the measurement right there. Um, the correct value or the theoretical value is the one here. So I'm going to go ahead and plug all those into our equation. Okay, so when we set this up, uh, obviously we're going to take care of our individual pieces of math. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take care of um, the top portion where we're doing our subtraction. So 17.7 .7 minus 21.21. Um, and the absolute value is going to equal 3.51. Okay, but we know from addition and subtraction rules for significant figures that my final answer in that problem should only have one place past the decimal because the 17.7 .7 measurement only has one place to the right of the decimal. Now, if all we were doing was subtracting the 17.7 .7 from the 21.21, um, we would go ahead and round our uh, 3.51 to 3.5. Okay, but what we're going to do instead is we're going to mark the 5 as the digit that's significant because we're going to take that number and apply additional mathematical operations. Now, we don't want to do any rounding until the end because we don't want to inflate or deflate the number um, early on. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and divide by our 21.21, okay, and we can multiply by our 100, that's just decimal movement. Okay, and if we go ahead and we do that math, we end up with 16.548. Okay, now um, the number of significant digits uh, is what we're going to use to determine our final answer because our final uh, answer uh, was obtained by using division. Okay, so there are two sig figs in this number, that's why we have the 5 marked there. There are four sig figs in that number, so our final answer should only have two sig figs. Two sig figs is going to show up at the um, 6 and the 16. If we look to the right, that 5 is going to cause that 6 to uh, round up to a 7. So 17% is going to be our final answer with the correct number of sig figs. Now, some of you may be asking, why am I not using the 100? 
um, to determine sig figs. Uh, the 100 is just uh, used to move the decimal. It has nothing to do with actual measurements. So significant digits are not considered um, in that particular um, number because it's not a measured value. So this is how we do our sig figs with our multi-step problems. Make sure you consider the significant figure rules for the different types of math happening within a single mathematical um, equation. All right. So scientific notation is basically a way to write really large or really small numbers um, so that we can record them really easily. Um, so we don't want to write, you know, 14 zeros uh, that are part of a number if we don't have to. Okay, um, so basically there's some rules for writing scientific notation. If you don't write it in the correct formatting, you're, you do not have your answer or your number in scientific notation. So let's get that squared away. Okay, so first of all, um, we're going to have um, basically two main parts. We're going to have some number times 10 to some other number. Okay, now uh, this value here, this number can only have um, one non-zero digit in front of the decimal, all right, or to the left of the decimal. So we could have, you know, one point something or eight point something or nine point something, but as soon as we have 10 point, okay, uh, basically at that point you are no longer in the correct format. So we can only have one digit in front of the decimal, whatever that digit may be. Okay, now your n value here, that tells you how many um, places you've moved the decimal um, to get uh, one digit in front of uh, the decimal. Okay, so um, now depending on the direction you've moved the, uh, the decimal point, that's going to dictate the sign of your exponent n. Okay, so you're either going to have um, a positive or a, val a negative value. Um, if you move to the left, uh, your n value should be becoming more positive. Um, if you move to the right, it should be becoming more negative. And we'll look at that when we look at examples. And the last thing we want to consider when we are dealing with um, writing numbers in scientific notation, whatever number of significant figures that you start with in the standard notation, you need to have those sig figs represented in the m portion of your um, scientific notation. All right, so let's go ahead and let's uh, write some large and small numbers in scientific notation. Let's go ahead and start with the big numbers. Okay, so in this first uh, example here, uh, we know that our, our decimal point is actually, you know, existing somewhere over here. Um, it hasn't been written there because uh, writing the actual digit or writing the actual decimal point there would indicate uh, that the zeros that are trailing the two nines are actually significant when they're not. Okay, so, but in this case, we know that even though it's not written, the decimal point is actually there. Okay, now, in order to put our number in the correct scientific notation, remember, our m value needs to have only a single non-zero digit in front of it. Okay, and so we're going to have to take the decimal that is existing at the end of this number and move it to the left until we get to this location here. Okay, so if we did that, that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 places to the right. Okay, so we've moved 7 places. We're going to have 9.9 .9 times 10 to the 7th as our scientific notation value associated with this number. Okay, and notice I had two sig figs in this number. I have two sig figs in the m portion of this scientific notation setup. Okay, now same approach here. Now guys, I want you to notice something about this particular example here. Um, notice the bar above this zero. Um, the bar above that zero is telling you that that zero is significant. Um, because it's been written out in standard form, there's no way we can use a decimal point uh, to indicate uh, that zero is being significant without actually changing the numerical value. So um, that line above it is telling you that that zero is significant. So once again, we know that the decimal point is at the end of the number here. We're going to move to the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven spaces. Okay, so once again, we've moved seven spaces. In this case, though, we're going to have 7.90 times 10 to the seventh millimeters as our final answer. Okay, and why is that? Well, there were three significant digits in this number, so there has to be three significant digits in our final answer um, in scientific notation. So we're going to look at the M portion of the scientific notation to get to that determination. 
Now, if we go ahead and we look at small numbers, same approach is uh, happening in terms of what we need to consider. Again, we only need one digit in front of the decimal, just like we see in the examples we did earlier. Um, but the decimal point is starting over here with these numbers, because these are smaller numbers. So we need to move our decimal point to the right, okay? And when we do that, obviously our exponential value is gonna become more negative. So in this case, we're gonna move our decimal to the right, okay, and that's going to give us one, two, three, four, five um, places to the right, okay, so 5.6 times 10 to the negative fifth is what uh, we're going to get as our final answer, okay, I had two sig figs in this number, I have two sig figs in the M portion of my um, scientific notation form of the number, okay, and then this last example here, same idea, we're going to move our decimal one, two, three spaces to the right, so we only have one digit in front of the decimal, that's going to give us 2.16 times 10 to the negative third kilometers, and we have our final scientific notation approach. So just make sure uh, you're making sure that the single digit in front of the decimal is part of the um, M portion of the scientific notation. Make sure the number of significant figures that you start with are the number that you end up with in the M portion. And then remember that your exponent is going to be dictated by the direction you go um, with your decimal place movements.